It is essential that the engineer learn to sketch pictorially with skill and facility. Ideas may be recorded as they occur in picture form, then used as the basis for orthographic drawings. Sometimes a pictorial sketch is used instead of orthographic views. A pictorial sketch often helps to clarify an orthographic drawing. Pictorial sketching is done freehand, but requires no artistic ability except a good sense of proportion. It is based on the same principles that govern the making of pictorial drawings with instruments. Similar techniques are used in the drawing of straight lines and circles as an orthographic freehand drawing. The materials used are identical. With a little practice, the young engineer can master pictorial sketching. In pictorial sketching, the three methods used are axonometric, oblique, and perspective. For axonometric sketching, there is a very wide choice in the position of the three axes. Of these, the isometric position is the simplest. However, distortion may be reduced and a better effect gained by drawing the cross axes at a smaller angle with the horizontal. Since sketches are not made to scale, the axes may be foreshortened until the proportion is satisfactory. Distortion may be overcome still further by slightly converging the receding lines. Axonometric sketching is usually best for rectangular objects or objects having non-parallel circular features. A successful method of establishing the direction of the two horizontal axes for cylindrical objects, which also is adaptable for other shapes, is to start with an ellipse, representing a circle on a horizontal plane. Then, through some point such as A, sketch a tangent in the direction desired for one of the pictorial axes. The direction of the other horizontal axis will be established by the diameter, which terminates at the tangent point. Complete the axonometric square. Then add the vertical axis and parallel edges. Complete the picture by adding the cylinder. A circle on a pictorial drawing is always an ellipse, whose major diameter is at right angles to the rotation axis, and whose minor diameter appears to coincide with the rotation axis. All circles on horizontal planes are drawn as ellipses, with a major diameter horizontal. To judge the size of the ellipse and the thickness of the cylindrical portions, it is usually best to draw enclosing pictorial squares. Draw the axes if desired to aid in sketching the curves. Oblique sketching may be used to advantage in drawing objects having irregular or circular features in parallel planes. One advantage of oblique projection is in preserving an irregular face in its true shape. The distortion of the other faces may be greatly reduced by foreshortening and converging the receding lines. This converging in either axonometric or oblique is sometimes called fake perspective. A sketch made in perspective gives a better effect than either axonometric or oblique. In sketching from orthographic drawings, a knowledge of the principles of perspective drawing is required. In sketching from the object itself, one may depend largely on observation, using one's knowledge of perspective phenomena as a check. Test the direction of a line by holding the pencil at arm's length and rotating the arm 
until the pencil coincides with the line. Move it parallel to this position back to the board. To estimate the apparent length of lines, hold the pencil perpendicular to the line of sight and mark with a thumb the length of pencil which covers the line. Rotate the arm with the thumb held in position until the pencil coincides with another line, and then estimate the proportion of this measurement to the first line. In sketching, follow a definite procedure. First, visualize the shape and proportions from orthographic views, a model, or other sorts. When you see the object in your mind's eye, like this, select the best point of view. A careless choice may result in a distorted drawing. Moreover, important features may be hidden. Every face of this piece should be at an angle to the picture plane. This is better, but the position still can be improved, as shown here. Note the direction of the axes. Start the sketch by drawing the axes, as you visualize them, on paper of a suitable size. Do not make the sketch too small. Block in the main outlines. Sketch the center lines for the holes. Then, the pictorial squares for the ellipses. Be careful to preserve proportions and relationships. Then, sketch in the ellipses. Complete the details and sketch the lines to the desired weight. If features are complicated, they should be sketched lightly and not heavied until satisfactory. Do not show hidden detail unless necessary. Check for errors of shape or proportion. Finally, remove any construction that may be objectionable or confusing.